Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to talk about squint or strabismus and the cover and cover test used to diagnose the type of squint. So starting with squint, squint is defined as misalignment of visual axis of the two eyes. And visual axis is basically the line, imaginary line joining the object that the eye is seeing and the fovea centralis where the image of the object is formed. So basically visual axis is the line of vision of the eye. So if there is misalignment of the visual axis of the two eyes, this eye is looking forward, this eye is looking at somewhere else, then it is called squint. So for example, in this patient, this eye is looking forward, suppose at a tree. This eye is looking in this direction, suppose at a hut. So before I studied squint, I used to think how the patient sees, does he see two images at a time? Can he see two images at a time? And the answer is no, because although his both eyes are seeing two different things, but he has got a single brain, which cannot cope with two different images. So what, it, what his brain does, it, it blocks the information from the from one eye and receives information from only the, only the other eye or the normal eye only. So this patient is seeing just this image and his other eye is like vacant of no use. So this is the basic concept of squint. So now we are going to talk about the types of squint. So squint is divided into two main types. One is manifest squint. And the other is latent squint. Manifest squint are called tropias. And latent squint are called phorias. You can say heterotropias and heterophorias are called squints. And there is a third type which is called pseudo squint, which is not basically a squint. But in pseudo squint, the eyes look like uh, this, slightly crossed, but in fact, the visual axes are, are aligned. And in fact, in real eyes are not crossed, but they appear crossed due to large epicanthal folds, especially in newborns and children. So these are the two main types of squint. Now, manifest squint is basically the squint that we are more aware of, that the patient, the squint has, as the name indicates, squint has manifested itself. So this is, when you look at the patient, you can see that the patient has got a squint. So this is manifest squint or tropia. The other type is latent squint. In latent squint, the patient appears normal. It seems as he does not have any squint. But when he closes his eye, his eye deviates. And when he opens it, his deviated eye again comes back to focus to um, uh, see the object the eye is seeing. So... The latent squints are important because they have a tendency to develop into manifest squint. So these are the two types of squint. Now we are going to discuss the cover-uncover test and how it is used to diagnose whether the squint is manifest squint or it is latent squint. So the cover-uncover test is a very simple test. What you do is you cover one eye looking at the other eye whether it moves or not. Then you uncover the eye looking at the uncovered eye whether it moves or not. Then you do the same on the other side like this. That's it. Now this test when you cover the eye looking at the other eye whether it moves or not is the cover test. And this test uncovering it is the uncover test. But they are, they are done together like cover and cover test. You never do just cover or just uncover test. So basically the cover test is for the manifest squint and the uncovered test is for the latent squint okay so now we will see if the patient has manifest squint what will be the result of cover and cover test and if the patient has a latent squint what will be the result of the cover and cover test so now our patient has manifest squint in right eye and we are going to perform the cover uncover test on both eyes so we cover 
the right eye looking at this one and this eye moves to maintain focus because the person was seeing from this eye and we blocked his vision so the other eye moved to maintain focus so this was a positive cover test because when he covered the eye moved then we are going to uncover looking at this eye it did not move although the other moved but this eye did not move so uncover test is not positive so the patient had a positive cover test and it shows that he has manifest squint in his right eye which is exotropia exo because the eye has deviated outwards if it deviated inward we will call it esotropia if it deviated upward it will we will call it hypertropia if downwards hypotropia tropia because the patient has manifest squint because cover test was positive so now we're going to perform cover uncover test on the other eye and nothing happens so this was an example of manifest squint now let's say the patient has latent squint in again right eye but when a, when the patient comes to us we don't know if he has got some squint or not or latent with squint and or if he is normal so we are going to perform the cover uncover test on both eyes let's see what happens so we are going to form cover test and then uncover nothing happened then on the other eye cover test and then uncover when we uncovered it, the eye was deviated and it moved. So this is a positive uncover test in the right eye, which means that the right eye had has um, a latent squint. So it was exophoria of right eye. Exo because it was deviated outwards. If you do it again, when we cover it, the eye vision occluded and it moved because it has latent squint. When we uncover it, it again moved back to maintain focus. That is it. Hope it was easy. Thank you.